Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise. Just to know, thus saith the Lord, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise. And just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I, I trust him, and how I prove him over and over, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior and friend. And I know that he is with me. He will be with me unto the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I, how I trust him. How I prove him over and over. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, for grace to trust him more. You see what the songs say? Oh, for grace. Oh, for grace is a grace. To trust him more. That means that there are levels to this trust. You can go further. There's a grace to trust God greater. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I prove him over and over, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Jesus, 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 there is something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus. Like a fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms, they shall all pass away. But there's something about that name. Kings and kingdoms, they shall all pass away. But there's something about that name.
can press, press on, press. You can press in this upper room. You can press, 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 press. You can press in this upper room. You can press, 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 press on. You can press in this upper room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. In this upper room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this upper room. Above the heavens, you can press, 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 you can press in this upper room. Saints, what you learned from the teaching earlier today? <laughs> what you learned from the teachings earlier today? What you learned? What did you learn from the teaching we did earlier? We was talking about Malachi's mantle. We was talking about the grace he had with the Elijah mantle. What did you learn today? Great and mighty is our God. 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 We speak to nations. What you learned today off of these teachings? The blessed mindset The blessed mindset is when you have sowing goals. The blessed mindset is when you have sowing goals. Sowing goals affect your spending. What you feel about that, Suzanne? What you feel about that?
Michelle said a non so is a soothsayer. A non so is a soothsayer. Some good stuff. A non so is a soothsayer. Saints, we ain't never heard that before, ain't it? They speak words of encouragement, but they don't do deeds of righteousness. Ain't that something? And saints, your life don't really start until you start sowing. Nothing really start. And some of y'all could have tested that. Ain't nothing start. Your life don't start until you start sowing. Before you start sowing, you're just talking. <laughs> your life don't start so, uh, start until you start sowing. I learned when you answer God's dream, he answers your dreams. Mal uh, Makai. Ain't that something? Answering God's dreams. And see, nobody really be thinking like that. Everybody just after God answering their dreams. I want the Lord to do this for me. But once you get into that mode of answering God's dream, that's when everything breaks open. Denise said Abel switched his genetics from the curse of his father. That's some deep stuff. Ain't that something? He switched his genetics. The seed could switch your genetics. And so, so think about that, saints. Abel's whole nature switched off of him honoring God. So the things that came did not overcome. He did. Kalen said, I learned a non-sower is a satanic prophet. How, how, how did you feel when you heard that, Kaylin? How do y'all be feeling when you hear certain things? Because this, this is something to me. What did you feel, though, when you heard that? That a non so is a satanic prophet, which I elaborate on that and I'll give clarification. Oh, I have seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say your word. Who you are, who you are. I don't feel like my voice working tonight. <laughs> it's who I am. It's who I am. Maybe because I talked all yesterday today. <laughs> Perfect in all of your way. Perfect in all of your way. Perfect in all of your way, you are. Oh, yes. Perfect in all of your way. Perfect in all of your way. Perfect in all of your way. <laughs> Undeniable, I can hardly speak. It's a peace so unexplainable. I can hardly think you call me deeper still. You call me deeper still. You call me. Deeper still In your love, in your love, in your love
sometimes your singing voice your singing voice could kind of like bop 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 saints what you learned from that teaching <laughs> earlier today what's your singing voice uh, what, what y'all learned from that teaching earlier tonight uh, earlier this morning this afternoon what else what else some of you are caught What are some other things? Ainsley said there are consequences that happens to the non-sower. What do you feel about that, son? What's what you feel about that? Jessica, this thing is wild that you just said right here. And I thought about that. Sometimes I'm in that teaching floor and I, I, then I go back and I'll be thinking about, wow, that's something right there. Like that's something to really ponder on. There's grace inside of that. Think about that. Think about that. Don't let Satan interpret the path to the harvest. Don't let Satan interpret the path. Jamila, what you feel about that? What you feel about that? When you when you say don't let Satan interpret the path to the harvest, what you feel about that? Because if you think about that, right? Interpreting the path to the harvest. That's like Satan uh, instigating like something that's only between you and the Lord. And the Lord is carrying uh, the increase and all the different things that you want, you need. And Satan try to interject and instigate like, let me tell you what's really going to happen. Oh, but well, what you feel about that? What's your take on that? Ashley said, sowers have different ministering spirits than a regular believer. Man, come on, come on, come on. What you feel about that, Ashley? And, and what did you feel when you heard that? Because cause did you know, like, a lot of times people may perceive, like, we all have the same angels. You know, that person, they are believer, they have the same angels as me, and that's not so. The angelic is moving off of the activity that you obey. Saints the same way. Somebody that's in prayer, they have certain angels that other people don't have because they're in prayer. And people that talk with the Lord, they carry different angels around them. So 
or somebody to talk to the Lord, they might say, I block off this village right now. I block it off right now. You're like, how do how you block off a village? Because see, they, they got more understanding. They know what they're doing. You hear them talking like that. You'd be like, ah, what, what? How you block off a village? What you talking about? And they, they dealing with spiritual commanding rights. And Constance said, when you die to finances, it's easier for you to die to everything else. When you die to finances, it is easier for you to die to everything else. And you know why that is so? Because finances, though people don't act like it, it is actually the thing that everybody look to to make something happen. Even a child, even a child, child might tell you something, but a child, child really looking to see if you got finances. Child like, let's go here. You're like, I got to buy this, I got to buy this. But the child is looking to make something happen. Everybody be looking to money and make something happen. So when you when you sow money, you literally taking something that everybody be looking to to make something happen. Look, if somebody tell you, let's go on this trip. The first thing you want to know is how much do it cost? If somebody tell you, would you like to get this plane ticket? The first thing you want to know, how much do it cost? If somebody tell you, would you like to buy this new gear? you like, how much do it cost? It, it's, saints, it's funny. If you see a stranger and somebody come up to them and say, would you like to buy this new product? The first thing they say is, well, how much do it cost? And what does it do? But they want to know the cost. People depend on money all the time. As if it could accomplish anything that they desire. So when you're sowing money, you're sowing something that takes a lot of virtue, a lot of soul. And so your soul is, is easy for you to give God anything else because that'd be the main thing that you'd be looking to to make something happen. If you about to go cook some food right now, the first thing you want to know, well, how much do the items cost? Why you need to know all that? See, you use money to make something happen. If somebody tell you, you know, do you think that you got enough gas to travel here? The first thing you want to know how much money I'm going to need. Well, I need more money for more gas. Why is that? People look to money all the time to make something happen. And so God knows this. So seed faith is literally you, you telling the Lord, I know that you are my source, my provider. And I know that you got me. And when you start sowing, it's easier for you to sow everything else. Because the very thing that you would use to sustain your existence in your body, you're sowing it. So it's easy for you to sow everything else. Saints, what, have you, what else you got from that teaching? What else you got from that teaching? What else you got from that teaching? We see Denise saying the seed goes into your genetics to reverse things that are in you that came from parents, bloodline that were evil, that were ungodly, that were wicked. Let me say something to you, Denise, and it's going to bless a lot of people as I'm talking to you. Now, watch this, Denise. Even though you have children or you had, you, you know, you can have a daughter and stuff, you know. You had a mama. So even though you get older in years. You could get so engrafted. Long eyelash problems. Don't worry about it. Long eyelash problems. I don't know how you ladies do it. Well, you better do it because you don't want to look like Bill Groom or Miss Jeffrey. You don't want to look like Miss Jeffrey. Your parents had an altar. Even though you get older and it's like you are the parent, you had a parent.
So the funny thing is that oftentimes people could get 70, 80, 90, 60, 50, 40, 30, and it's like they become the parent, but they have parents. And the parents that you have, oftentimes you can forget about it because you have become a parent yourself. And so the whole idea about the, your parent, it could get foggy and you could forget there are some altars that I'm breaking with my sewing. It's not just me getting correct. It is me, uh, and me getting correct for my child. It is also me receiving victory because of never dealing with the things that was transferred to me, even though I'm older in years. Let me give you an example. Say like someone is 70 years old. And they like, you know, I learned the ways of God now. And now I'm teaching my children. I'm teaching everybody, you know, I'm on the right path now. But even at 70 years old, there are altars from their parents. And if they didn't deal with those altars, even though you look at them and you see them gray, they might be walking slow. They might be older. There are still some generational things. Saints, I'm going to say something real shocking right now. Did you know that? Did you know that people can go to heaven at the end of their life and still have altars that they haven't defeated yet? And I, I'm going to shock you with this. Elijah did exactly that. He didn't destroy the altar of Jezebel. Shataya. Remember, Elijah prayed to die because he didn't want to deal with that altar. That altar was strong. That's deep, ain't it? That altar was so strong. So Elijah never destroyed the altar of Jezebel because he actually ran and that was him permitting that altar to stay. Now watch this here. He destroyed Jezebel's prophets. For those of you all that don't know, the prophets of Baal were prophets that Jezebel had mentored. That's why Ahab liked going to them. He didn't like listening to Micaiah. He didn't like Elijah. Ahab had liked the prophets of Baal. These were the prophets that Jezebel was overseeing. So Elijah did go strong, but he left his body with altars that he didn't defeat because Jezebel altar was left. That's why we see Jehu get raised up and we see Elisha moving forth. We see this new breed of the double portion. Now we see in that operation, but what are they going after? They're going after the satanic altar. I want some of you older people to really think about that. Even when you become a parent, you had a parent. Is there altars destroyed in you? Wow. See, oftentimes you look at it like, you know, I'm a mom now. I'm a dad now. You know, I, 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 you know I'm older in years now. You know, I'm a grown up. I'm an adult. But has the transference from their altar been defeated? The reason why you have anxiety is because your mama had anxiety. So, so you, you wonder, why am I like this? Why do I get schizophrenic? Your mama was like that. She was schizophrenic. You just didn't know it. Are you hearing me?
I know women right now that smoke because their mama smoke. Now watch this here. Sometimes you could destroy the altars that's obvious. Let me show you something. There are people that have obvious altars. Like, let, me, let me give you an example. Like when you come over to the Lord, you know that um, certain things are obvious altars. Like for instance, like you know prayerlessness is an obvious altar. You know, um, you know, um, Walking in unforgiveness is an obvious altar. You know, not praising God, thanking God, that's an obvious altar. So like there's altars that you can know is obviously an uh, altar that needs to be broken. But then if we go strong on it, there's some altars that you don't really be catching. Like responses. If your parents gave dumb responses, you'll come into your generation and give dumb responses too. You see what I'm saying? But see, you wasn't in their life at the time where they was making dumb responses. So that altar of dumb responses is there. Let me, let me, let me say something to you that some of y'all didn't catch. Zacharias was John's dad. All right. Zacharias was John's dad. But what we also have to look at that not only was Zacharias John's dad, Zacharias had a dad. Are you hearing me? Saints, I want to say something profound that you never thought about. God told Abram to leave his father's house, which is Terah. But Terah had a father. So all throughout Terah's life, even though he's an old man now, he did not ever deal with his father's altar in his life. So Tara, throughout the course of his life, he never listens to God on breaking down the altar from his father. So now he has a son named Abram and God tells his son, get away from him. Because he ain't break no altars. He ain't listen to nothing I say. So you're going to have to leave his house. Because his house does not have obedience and fear to my voice. Before we ever see Abram being told this, God was dealing with terror. That's why God could tell Abram to leave because he had knew terror's heart. Saints, I don't give two firecrackers and two fried fish fries and dip. I don't care what you say. God will never tell you to leave someone that's right. Never. And he will never leave someone that's obeying his, tell you to leave someone that's obeying his voice. God only separates you from people that his voice has come to and he has watched them ignore him. So he's saying, listen, if you don't want the same consequence they're going to get, come on, come on, come on, come on. If you don't want the wrath of God that's coming on them, Come on, come on, come on, come on. If you don't want to experience the same curses that's going to manifest towards them, come on, come on, come on. Wow. Terror ignored God. 
So when we see God telling Abram, leave Terah, God didn't do that because Terah just said innocently, he don't know what's going on. God had already dealt with him. And the end result is his heart hard. So come on. Wow. Saints, um, oh, we can go many angles to this. That's why you also see that the uh, Lord had um, told, um, he told uh, Samuel not to go to uh, Saul any longer because Saul was already being dealt with by God. And so, and so, so it, it wasn't like God just told him out of nowhere, don't go to this stranger man no longer. No, no, it wasn't a stranger man. It was someone that God was dealing with in that season. And God had already dealt with them and saw their heart. So God said, don't go back to them. You see what I'm saying? Saints, I'm, I'm sharing something to you that's deep prophetic secrets, right? Because you look at some people in the text, like Zacharias, John's dad, he becomes mute. But Zacharias had a biological dad. His biological dad had altars. So when he gets into this situation, those altars manifest. All right. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Those, uh, uh, those altars manifest. Uh, today I was having a conversation and I told someone, I said in the conversation, I said satanic altars don't manifest until you're under pressure. I said pressure is where everybody sees what satanic covenant still exists. Wow. Uh, we going live right now. Okay. On the next broadcast. I feel a strong glory just hit me just now. We going live on this broadcast right now. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, for your name is great. And greatly to be praised. Jesus, you be lifted higher. 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 Jesus, you be lifted higher. 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 Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, higher. 